Hi, welcome back to the Dial Podcast. I am Jake Von During, and I'm here with Lance Epler. Lance Romance, back live in studio. In studio. Mostly in one piece. <laughs> Mostly. Part, Mostly. Parts of you are in studio. Parts, parts of, of me are, are in studio. Parts of me are scraped across the road somewhere in Central yes. Oregon. <laughs> they probably washed that off by now. Nah. No? Nah. Probably not. <laughs> Just let it roll. They're going to let that roll. Sitting across the table from me, Matt Legrand. What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? You guys are looking pretty rough around the edges. <laughs> pretty rough, but, you know, oh, always wait. good to see you either way. Yeah, it's good to see you, yep. Matt. Yep. That's cool. Where's Evan? Price, uh, I think he had to work this weekend. He did some he, sort of training thing. He and pulled then, off some big like uh, training session here right. in the endurance lab, and it looked like it was well attended. And, and so then, yeah, so and then he's, he's got to work today. Cause yeah, he to make up for it. Played around too much. Yeah, who knows? Uh-huh. <laughs> this is for you, Evan. <laughs> we miss you, Evan. I'm glad he was on the show last week. He actually yeah. came in and sat down. Right? He did. He yeah. had poked in at the very end, which was kind of nice to see him. So. Cool. Um, you guys ready to do a podcast? That's, Live stream thing? <laughs> That's podcast. The no pre-production meeting podcast. Go! You don't need no stinking pre-production. <laughs> we don't We're need just for no losers. Pre-production just meetings are for losers. Turn on the mics and let it roll. Let it rip. Uh, cool. How about some backpedaling? I'm going to start with oh, Matt. Yeah. We're going to save Lance okay. for last. I'm even going to go before you this week because <laughs> okay. you've got stories for days. So I Matt. don't even know what I've done this past week. I should look it up and think about it. But, like, I, you know, a couple rides. Uh, I did the... Um, Beaches ride, and ah. then I did the beaches rides fun. Uh, I got there late. I got there like 30 minutes late. I did catch the group still, but then uh, they went hard with their TT bikes and dropped me, which is perfectly fine. I was okay with that. And then I did the um, flogging ride. Yeah, buddy. Which is super fun. I yeah. still I love that ride every time, but I also think the course is dangerous. The traffic is dangerous. Like it's Matt, guess what? Fun. All roads are dangerous. And that, that okay, course, wait. I'm going to disagree with you. There are certain sections on there, but it is what it is. Here. Even roads without cars yeah. are dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the thing. You do a, If you do a ride at, I mean, this is not feasible, but you do a 10 a.m. ride, yep. and your roads are going to be safer, yep. in my opinion. be about three people there. Yes, I know. <laughs> right. There'll be less you know, of a flogging for that, those that, That's true. You uh, know, we could theoretically push it back even further now that we've got daylight right. for days. I mean, it, it's getting yep. dark pretty late now i'm yeah. not sure it's what, what 8 45 ish now it could be a little safer if we push it another half an hour yeah yeah easier for people to get to but honestly well. i felt safer this ride than the first one i don't know why i think it's just like a matter of you know knowing what's kind of gonna happen yeah but i also went to the yeah. front early and yeah. yeah we've made a few little changes based on the number of people out there and the ability levels being so dramatically different for yeah. a lot of reasons um i think that's helped i, I yeah. do so oh yeah it's a great ride. It's a great ride. I mean, uh, I had a little bit of problem because I started up late. I started at the very, very back of, after the um, break. We do a mid-break in the middle of this ride. And uh-huh. then, so then I'm like in the very, very back. And then you basically get on China Dish Road. So like everyone's gone. And so I'm catching all the scragglers or whatever. Oh. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, all the people breaking off. And then I found a group or whatever eventually. And, and we had fun or whatever. But yeah, it was, I love that ride. It's great. And my legs just quake afterwards. Perfect. Yeah, super fun. That's the point of the ride. Yep. Yeah. And <laughs> race practice. Race practice. And um, yeah, a little bit of swimming, a little bit of running, but not a ton. So we're getting there. Cool. We're doing stuff. Maybe I'm going to have to become a biker because my ankle is horrible. <laughs> it's yeah. just so. not doing good. It's not great. It's been a couple of years now. I mean, yeah, well, actually, it's, it's been a lot of years since you had your surgery where you flew over <laughs> right. to Europe and had that done. Yeah. And it, you know, and I did an Ironman after that. Yeah. So that's good. It's just in a really bad place right now. It's basically like the whole ankle is bad as well as the Achilles. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. Bicycles. Bikes are good. Yep. Biking does not hurt it. But I always you, think you Captain like, Aqua Bike, you because you can swim pretty well. <laughs> you know, yeah. Right. But no one does Aqua Bike, so it's like no. why you know. So you can go out there and crush. I can win. Yes. I can win those. everything. All of the medals. Yeah. It's not the same. You know. It's like you can literally see because you finish when on the second whatever leg of a triathlon, and it's like then you're finished, and so you can see what place you kind of would have been in the triathlon sure. starting the run. Yeah. Which in the olden days I would run myself into you know better position. But you can see that you're not like winning and you finish and then you're like, and I won the, you know, whatever aqua bike. But guess what? Like literally I'm in like 
10th, 20th place, whatever it is. <laughs> right. And you're like, I didn't, <laughs> you don't really feel like a winner at that point. So, <laughs> but yeah, I could, I could do that, I guess. You're a winner in our hearts, man. Yeah, Matt. sure. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, my week wasn't all that spectacular either. It's just such a busy, busy time around the yeah. lap here. It, it, and, uh, you know, Lance has been gone. I don't have my handy little helper, Lance. I've so been gone been, like two and a half weeks. weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've missed you. Carl and I have been pretty busy down here, but um, that's neither here nor there. We did do our gravel ride this past week and cue the sad trombone. They cut out a good another mile and change of the dike. Oh, really? no, really? Yeah. You get There's maybe, maybe a full mile of riding on the dike where it used to be like three point something miles. Yeah. They, they, it's they, pretty close now. It's like not even worth going down there. Unless you're maybe if you're walking, but not on a bicycle. Mm. So you can still do that uh, loop down to the beach, though. We did, and we did yeah. that. So you know where you turn down to go yeah, down yeah. there. If you keep going past that point, you maybe get another quarter, an eighth of a mile, or something like that. It's not very far. Well, that's disappointing. And it was a bummer too, because we had a pretty good sized group. We had like yeah. ten or twelve people there this past uh. week, and everybody was all ramped up and ready to go turn it on and um, <laughs> hit that. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what the plans are? Is it like permanently closed? Yeah, um, th they're they're they're, um, they're like trying to restore the wetlands, so right. they're removing the they're removing the dike. Not all of it, but a big portion of the mm -hmm. dike. They're removing it so that the wetlands will be more natural. That's the whole. That's what they're the whole point of that whole thing is. So. Yep. So it would be really nice if they just put in like a, a bridge, like a couple of pylons every now and then yep. and just give us something to ride on. Yep. That'd be fantastic. And take it all the way to the bridge of the gods while you're at it. They yeah. Don't, they don't fantastic. care about it. That would be awesome. Gravel all the way to the bridge oh, of the yeah. gods. I know. Yeah. Please. We need something. I see all these other people doing like, oh, I just hop on my rails to trails and I go and I'm like, we have, why, why don't we have that out of have our front door? Have you guys ridden on the uh, bike path that starts over there by Multnomah Falls and it's supposed to go out closer to yes. like the Dallas. Oh, I've done How that far yet. out does that go now? Um, it, it doesn't go all the way to Hood River. It doesn't go all the way to Hood River. Um, it gets it gets close, okay. but it, if you want to go all the way... Is it Hood River that it goes? Yeah. It, if, if you want to go all the way to Hood you River, to you out. have to get on to 80, the, the, highway. the highway. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah really? But yeah. only for a little while. It's something like... But that Can't trail, it's it's gorgeous. It's only like ten miles long or something like that. But it's still, it's, it's fantastic. It's yeah, just for bikes. It's Twenty miles, yeah. It's butter smooth because it's new. Yeah. It's it's a nice little. Have to check yeah. that out. So yeah, we should do that. Cool. And then we did the flogging ride. That was fun. Um, How's the A group? Fast and Furious, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I heard Evan Price hopped in. He was there. Yeah, it was fun. Um, God, there was a few people that hadn't been there. There was a lot of people that weren't there, but for every person that wasn't there, there was like two new people. Two other people. So wow. like you're kind of feeling things out, getting to know like a few other people. And it's been really nice having Pacific Office Automation come out. They yeah. just keep Those bringing guys more, more guys out cool. there. I like that Awesome. Group. Sorry. That's turning. the point of that ride. Yes. Let's race practice and yeah. team on team. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Seeing a Team O kid out there, seeing a Team Sage kid out there. I mean, we've got other people that are showing up to that ride, and it's fantastic. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what this ride keeps doing yeah. over the course of time. But in, in the vein of what Matt said earlier, I was like, kind of joking, like, it's yeah. not safe. I, I do agree. I mean, I think all riding on the road is inherently dangerous. Right. And when you've got that many people out there, you can look at it from two different ways. Like, that increases the odds of somebody getting hurt or it's safety in numbers. But in the same breath, True. I just want to make sure that everybody's being respectful yeah. and right. we're not irking the, uh, the locals too much yeah. because – I, I think we had over 50 people this past week. I wonder if we could like take a round of donations and buy some signage and just put it on there and be like, have little notes up there on, you know, those just little signs that bike just say, event ahead. I don't know. Something like <laughs> cyclists like on Thursday, road. Thursday evening ride bike ride or yeah. something so that people know like, Hey, Thursday night, that that's when the, you see the big group of bikers. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? I did a ton of work on my house again. Oh, <laughs> wow. Working here at this lab, but um, my shoulder withstood that pretty well and i'm like all right well if it did that well everybody's out playing gravel bikes and all this other stuff we've got short track fingers crossed season maybe hopefully, hopefully. coming up probably not but i'm like i need to see if my shoulder is going to be able to hold up to it and because my uh, again we'll do, hold on. <laughs> shoulder. my saturday fell apart and i ended up riding on friggin's whiff again. Oh, no. oh no dang it so sunday i got on the, the mountain bike and road for a couple hours and it went surprisingly well now ask me again this morning how my shoulder's pretty feeling sore. and it's pretty sore it, it's not happy and i was telling lance earlier it's a it's a weird kind of like a, a spider web 
of pain mm-hmm. around my shoulder. So that tells me it's a lot of nerve stuff and I am having a hard time getting up kind of high. But the moral of the story is I rode my mountain bike for two hours and had fun and right. I, it didn't bother me too much while I was riding it until I got off the bike and it felt like it was trying to like spasm, which makes it feel like it wants to yeah, yeah. subluxate right. or come out altogether. That's not happy. But the, the fact that I got to go ride it and go do some stuff that was a little bit more technical, that was fun. Where'd you go? Oh, just uh, Fallen Leaf Lake, Lackamas Park, all the all, all did the all the, all the yeah. trails, so. all the trails. things where you can ride from home too. Yep, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, about twenty That's miles. Nice. So that was fun. Cool, nice. Enough about me, Lance. You did a gravel stage race. I this got past week. I got four stories to tell. Can I keep them short? No. no. <laughs> You've got one minute. <laughs> one no, minute. That's <laughs> not minute. possible. <laughs> That's uh, like price. I'll do this in sixty seconds. <laughs> it goes three for three minutes. minutes. Um, the first story I wanted to tell was I was in Vegas two weekends ago mm-hmm. and I got myself into real trouble and I wanted to tell the story the law? as a warning. <laughs> yeah, you know me. It's that it's thinking there's rules against naked riding. Were you aware of that, Matt? You can't no. ride naked in Vegas. You can't tell me what to do, Uncle Law. That's not, that's, that's not true. Um, I headed out to do like a four hour ride in Las Vegas. Um, I did not check the weather very carefully and that was a major mistake. Uh. Uh, it turned out to be about 95 degrees while I was riding. I heard it's warm there. And um, there ended up being about a 30-mile-an-hour wind. And so I was doing a big, huge loop, and I got four hours into the ride, and I still had 20 miles to get home or something like that. Oh, and man. I am so fast on this ride. Yes. I'm like, whoa, I'm freaking I'm ripping it. Tearing this thing up. <laughs> and I come back, and I'm pushing 300 watts and going 12 miles an hour Uh-oh. trying to come back. And I actually stopped at a gas station because I ran out of fluids. Yeah. But um, I got back to the van. Brandy was doing a soccer tournament in Vegas, and right. I, we just parked the van in the you know, where she was having the tournament. I rolled up. She'd been waiting there for a while for me. And um, I immediately started to cramp, and I actually went into pretty severe heat exhaustion, oh. which was headed for a heat stroke. My, my – um, my hand started to cramp like this when you get really dehydrated, and I couldn't, like, stop shaking. It was, it was kind of bad. I was pounding fluids and pounding fluids and trying to keep myself cool to cool myself down, and I'm like, okay, let's go. We're driving, and I, I said, okay, we need to get to the hospital. hospital because I think I need an IV. It was getting that bad, and I couldn't think clearly. My heart rate was, like, at 140, and I was yeah. just sitting there. Oh, jeez. So Brandy's like freaking out and driving to the hospital, and then all of a sudden, of course, I start puking. Yeah, <laughs> that totally happened. I puked everything up that I had drank, yeah. and after I did that, all my symptoms went away. Oh. Weird. So I ended up just going and sitting in a pool and cooling down and drinking more fluids, and, and I ended up being okay, but I was like on the way to the hospital, and it was just because I did not... It's Vegas in April. I should have been smarter. I didn't check the wind, and that kind of buried me. So Ooh. just be careful of the heat. If you're listening to a hot place out there, just be careful. I did not ride for four days after that. I did not. I, I, Jake, I, are you still streaking? <laughs> yes, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, him and, him and Sean are, st- are at like 260 or something Sh- like I that. Like Sean, I feel like Sean has done some they taking some easy time, which is good. He had some um, yeah heart res- palpitations. Heart, so he had some heart level restrictions. He had to keep it under. So oh, okay. he took it really easy for a, like a month or something. Yeah, like it was a that. bit of time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. He's all good now. He got released yeah. from Z two jail. Yeah. So, and okay. he like out of the clink. He went out and ripped a <laughs> ride or two. I'm sure. But uh, yeah, so I I didn't ride for like four days. I was just like ruined, and I th- and so we were headed back home from after that. And I wasn't even sure I was going to do this gravel race because yeah. do I feel good enough? Is this smart? Is this not smart? This is probably not smart for me to do. And you said, oh, wait, this is not smart. Let's do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it was like only two days before the race, and I emailed the promoter, and I say, hey, can you just get me? I w- I've already paid for the race. I had like a deal from last year anyway. And so he's like, yeah, let me put you in. And I, I just did the small version. So this is the cat. I can't even st- – speak right i'm trying to spit out so many things this is the cascade gravel grinder it's one of chad sperry's events breakaway promotions and um, it's a three day stage gravel race and there was a big grinder which uh, and a small grinder which is just relatively shorter um stages 
And, uh, and so I said, just put me into the master's men small grinder. So we showed up and I thought, okay, I'll do the first stage was a five mile gravel time trial, mostly downhill on a very, very rocky road. It was not nice. Yeah. It was not nice. Like bike did you use? I have that BMC Urs, yeah, um, gravel bike, and that thing just when it gets when it gets rough, that thing rips. Really, it rides like a hardtail when it's rough. What tires did you use? I I had forties on the WTB okay. um, the Rattler, I think they're they're forties, yep. and I have tire inserts as well. I have Cush cores in there. I actually I raced pretty low pressure and bottomed out several times. Really, yeah, but um, never flatted. Whereas a teammate, Gary Cornelius, in this uh, time trial, he double flatted. Multiple times, if I'm not mistaken, yes, didn't he? He had to limp in, oh, so kind of bad. <laughs> Five miles is uh, pretty short. Yeah, so it's like full gas, you know, 15 minutes. Okay. So, like, I, I, I thought, okay, I'll do this first thing and just see how I feel. And I hadn't been on the bike for four days, so I felt <laughs> freaking awesome. Did you have power? <laughs> yeah, I felt great. So... In the Masters Men's Small Grinder Field, there was about 30 of us doing the, the whole stage race, and I, I won the time trial. Congrats. I won it by like a minute, like by 55 seconds or something hey, like man, that. Tire choices are a big deal when you have <laughs> yes. like hefty gravel, and, and also the bike, right? I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. that's great. Is Yeah, big deal. So, okay, I guess I'm feeling all right. Let's try to do this. So the next day's stage... Um, it was only a 40 mile gravel race mm-hmm. and it was relatively flat, like only a thousand feet of climbing. So not a whole lot of climbing, a lot of flat. Um, what kind of power were you holding on those flats? Oh yeah. I could hold like 320 for 40 miles. <laughs> Something like that. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good it's, God. Lance. It's, it's turning around for me a little bit. Yeah. Feeling okay. I'm feeling okay. It's turning around for me. Maybe those four days off had something to do with that, uh, maybe? It's possible. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. But what happened is this course, probably people already, some people know this, but not everybody who listens to the podcast probably knows this, but this 40-mile course, the first 12 miles were on pavement because we started at a snow park and we like went right. bombing down this hill and we're going down a, gra- uh, a paved road before we hit the gravel. We're all in a pack. There's... 30 of us, all the master's men, I'm trying to stay towards the front to s- just stay out of yep. danger. Yeah. And um, I looked down at the wrong time, and the guy in the lead um, who was pulling, he had swerved to the right. So the guy, I was in, sitting in third. The guy in second swerved to the right, and I crossed his tire, and my tire rubbed his, and I just hit the oh, deck, like super hard. Like, uh, if you're if you're watching on YouTube, you can see my head is scratched. That's I scary. smacked my head. I need a new helmet, by the way. So that's an impact scratch from your helmet. That's an impact <laughs> scratch from my helmet. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, you can see my elbow is, uh, I lost some skin. Do you want to see the others? Yeah, please. No, not really. Oh, okay. it's a family, <laughs> this is a family show? It's a family yeah. show. Family. I did... I actually, my hip took the most abuse. It was all swollen and bruised, and, and I lost hematoma skin. Hematoma in there? Or? Yeah, there's yeah. a hematoma in there. What helmet are you going to get next? Um, I'm sticking with the cask. They came out with this new, you know, like competitor to the MIPS technology yep. that, okay. that Giro has. And w- so, WG11. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go with the cask. I like I like the cask helmets a lot. Yes, sir. So I, I hit the deck. Um, the We hadn't hit the gravel yet, so we weren't really racing yet, even though the race right. was on. And the whole field waited for me, which was way cool this is very nice of them yes i hit the deck um i stand up <laughs> cussing <laughs> i'm so mad Did, no one went over you I'll no you. okay no i nobody they all missed me i think i don't know but you know you don't remember much i, <laughs> no, I, I hit my head pretty hard but i didn't hate, uh, see stars or anything okay so um the, the guy who crossed my wheel he came back and he's like oh my gosh are you okay i'm so sorry you know and he actually helped my stuff was scattered everywhere. My bottles were everywhere. My glasses were gone. Everything, Yard sale. Everything came out of my pockets. Yeah. 
You know, it was only a 40 mile race, so I didn't, I wasn't wearing my chase vest. I mean, everything flew out of my pockets. I had my flat kit in my pocket. I'm picking everything up. I jump back on my bike. My handlebars are tweaked. Oh. I have to tweak them back. I jump back on, and the guy who crashed me out actually came back and helped pull me back to the field. Whoa. Yes. And when we catch them, I realized they had all soft pedaled and were waiting. And so when I catch back on, I'm like, I'm okay, guys. Thank you so much. That was way cool of you. you know those and they're like, hey, like he's that. back on. We're all good. Let's go. Wow. Yeah. So Man. That was that's Masters classy. Field. It was Masters pretty classy. Field. Masters Field. <laughs> Can't turn 45 fast enough. No. And it was a mile later. We hit the gravel road. And I attacked <laughs> because I was so mad. You know, remember that guy we waited on? Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he just he attacked. Just he, he just sprung a little surprise on us there. So anyway, the rest of the race was pretty flat. And um, there were Hutch's Dental is a is a biking team based out of um, Bend, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And I was really jealous of them. They had like they had like 15 people at this race and there were three of them in our field. And so, you know, we, we only had like five people from our team who had made it down there to do the race. And I didn't have a teammate in right. the small grinder. Yeah. And um, so I, I attacked the field. We all, we all kind of bunched back up. It, that forced a selection of like six. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and so over the, next, um, over the next like 10 miles – the Hutches guys were playing me. One was oh nice, yeah. It was it was it was racing. That's it was good. racing tactic. It was cool. One would attack, the other one never took a pull. So one would attack and try to get away. And me and another guy, we could kind of tell we were a couple of the strong yeah. guys. So we would have to chase the attack down because we had no teammates. And then the second guy would attack. You know, it was no one wants to be on your wheel too. After that, you really, no. you know, that's one strategy. I, I, well, I was the guy who crashed, so nobody wanted to be on my wheel. That's the that's a strategy, actually. It's a it's a right. tactic. So what ended up happening is there was one time where one of the Hutch's dental guys attacked. We let him get about a hundred meters up the road. I waited. We we let him go instead of yeah. chasing it down. And once we hit a technical section, which is kind of your thing. my jam. I hit it hard. Nobody went with me. I when I caught him, I passed him direct immediately, and um, I got about a minute up the road, so I got away a little bit. Right. Uh, but it was pretty flat. There were still ten miles to go, and um, I got reeled back in. But by this time, wow. there was only two, so now there was only three of us left. Who was it? Any the team? Um, was it Hutches again or no? It or one Hutches guy, his name's Warren Atkey. Uh -huh. uh, he was the guy who was not attacking. He was letting his teammate yeah. do the work. Perfect. The other guy was Matt Mallet. He uh -huh. is from Corvallis. Okay. He is like a, he's a cat two roadie down in Corvallis. Okay, strong. Yeah, strong guy. So they caught, um, they caught back up to me, and the three of us worked together for the last like five miles. Well, there was a small climb before a very technical downhill. I didn't know any of this. In the small climb, me and Matt dropped the okay. Hutch's guy. And, and as soon as we get the top of the downhill, I, I say to Matt, I go, Matt, we lost him. Let's go. We go. It's just the two of us. Let's go. And so I hit it with like 5K to go in the race. And it was a technical, bumpy, rocky downhill. And Matt, the roadie, just not used to that, and I gapped him by like forty seconds and won the stage. Wow! So, <laughs> what was the finish like? Was it something where if he was still there, you guys would have sprinted out for it, or is it? Um, was it a hilltop or no? How it was what? not a hilltop. It was at the. It was there was like downhill section and then a flat like run in, uh -huh. but bumpy, rocky, you know, two like Jeep road, oh. like run in. Yeah, that could have been interesting. Yeah, but. Well played. So I ended up winning that stage. I was super stoked. So it was I'm the dumb guy who crashed, and then they waited for me, and then they won the stage, which was kind of crazy. So next day, the the big day, uh, um, the small grinder race was 50, uh, about 50 miles, but there were 4,000 feet of climbing. It was not flat. No. There were three major climbs on it. And uh, that is not my jam. That is yeah. not my thing. And I knew that I would have a very difficult time hanging on to the uh, Matt, the roadie guy. The roadie guy. Yep. And so, okay, my plan, I'm not going to take a pull. I'm not going to go to the front at all. And I'm going to sit on Matt's wheel because 
um, in the in the three day stage race, the Omnium, it was it was placed by you got points per place. It didn't have anything to do with time, so it was points per strictly place. Strictly points, right. then. Strictly points. So first place was twenty points down to one point for twentieth place. Sure. Yeah, and I had a two point lead because I had yeah two wins. I had two wins, and Matt had two seconds. Yep. So, so second place was 19 points? Uh, yes, but the, the, the time trial was only worth 10 points. Oh. Yeah, second place was 19 points, though. Gotcha. Yes. So I knew that I either had to beat Matt or only be one place behind him to win the Omnium. It's mark all day long. So it's just like, okay, I'm just Was gonna... there a chance that somebody else could have snuck in and, and taken the overall from both of you? No. So you guys had enough? Yeah, unless go- both of us didn't finish. Gotcha. Or totally blew it gotcha so the whole point was okay stay with matt so the thing starts off with a seven mile climb like a six and a half mile climb yeah. on gravel not so you were, not my you're hurting. thing you're hurting right from the gun <laughs> and all i did was i just sat on matt's wheel i literally just sat on matt's wheel i'm like i'm just gonna try to hang with him as long did you just tell him like i'm just gonna try and sit on your wheel <laughs> no we just kind of he he was looking behind him every 30 seconds. He's like, have I dropped him? Have I dropped him? No. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like sitting on his wheel, just like holding it. And funny enough, w- the two of us ended up dropping everybody, the whole wow. field. And right near the top with like a quarter mile to go to the to the top of the first climb, I dropped my chain. Oh. <laughs> So I was trying to click up one gear, and it wasn't going into that gear. I actually haven't looked at my bike. I think my rear my rear wheel was probably loose. Seriously? And you didn't check that before the race? <laughs> no. Guess. Oh, the one thing I did notice before the race is that my, my brake lever had cracked. My carbon fiber brake lever had cracked, and it almost broken off. I had to duct tape it together before the race. I noticed it like 10 minutes before the race started. Yeah, I needed the mechanic out there, and I'm the mechanic, so that was stupid. Anyway, so I dropped my chain. I had to jump off the bike to put my my chain back on, and I I lost him. I Matt rode away from me at that point, and I mm-hmm. thought that's it. Yep, I'm never gonna see him again. Yeah, but you still only need to get you only second, needed to get yeah. second. I only need to get second, but there was another guy right who was not in the Omnium was only doing the Saturday race. Mm-hmm or the Sunday race, and if he had finished between me and Matt, Matt would have won. Yep. And so I thought, I'm like, crap. So I put the chain back on. I jump on. We get to the top of the climb. I bomb the descent. I was like, out of the 220 people that did that descent, I was like the third fastest uh, yesterday. That's including all the pros and all the open men and everyone. Cause wow. I, I shouldn't say this. I super tucked the descent on my gravel bike. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> but it was a it was You're a paved me. descent. That that descent was okay. paved. So I get to the second climb and I'm like, I just gotta go as hard as I can. And when as I was doing the second climb, I could see Matt, but he was only about a minute in front of me. And I thought, okay, just keep him in sight. Just keep Matt in sight. I get to the top of the second climb and I had passed the guy that was in between us, right. and I'm I'm trying to negotiate with him. <laughs> I'm like, dude, if you beat me in this race, you have to beat that guy too. I cannot lose to him by more than one place. I'm trying to negotiate <laughs> with him. Like, if if we're close and you let me beat you, I will give you my prize because I need to win. <laughs> and he was like, what? I'm not in the Omnium. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Your place matters. And he didn't get it, and I realized, okay, forget it. Let's just race. Never mind. So we get to the top of this descent. I think Lance Armstrong did that once. He like, <laughs> I was trying to negotiate. You, pay you $5 million. <laughs> right, if you let me get one place up. I can't remember. Wasn't that like one of the rumors of something <laughs> happening for him yeah. back like early on in his career? Yeah, he's paid off some folks <laughs> along the way. So I get, I get to the top of the climb, the second climb, and this descent was nasty. Well, guess oh. what? Good for me. It was washboardy, nasty, rocky. And I, at right near the bottom of that descent, I caught Matt, and I went past him so fast. He looked so, he just looked so dejected when I went past him. <laughs> I'm like, and I went by thinking, okay, we're gonna be together. Let's just race together. This this last 25 miles, fantastic. Let's yeah. just race together. 
And I went by and I'm like, woohoo, come on, Matt, jump on. Yeah. And he looked at me like, he just had this look of like sheer dejection on his face. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I guess I'm, I'm going to go. So we do the last climb, which was the steepest of the three climbs. And it was two and a half miles long. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tempo up this. And when Matt catches me, I'm just gonna try to stay with him. He never caught me on yeah. the third climb. Huh. So I got to the top of the last climb with 15 miles to go, which was mostly downhill. And I was off the front. I was in the lead. And I thought, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Here we go. So it was 15 miles of hammering downhill and jumping. You know, uh, I, I ended up winning by like four minutes. You so, dropped him by four minutes on that last race. Actually, Matt fell apart completely, and he ended up finishing fourth. Really? He got passed by two other guys. I actually ended up being Matt by nine minutes. Oh, my god! Because he just kind of fell apart. Do you think he just tried going too hard once you dropped the chain and tried to get away from you and yeah. it didn't pay dividends at all? His, uh, his fitness wore out, and his lack of gravel experience, yeah. and the descents were really hard for him. Yeah. Did you guys talk after the race? Yeah, we did. Yeah. And that's what he said. He goes, like, it was so bumpy, and I, like, I'm on that BMC Oars, which rides like a hardtail, and uh -huh. I, like... Soaked it up and I just, rolled. like, floated over the... <laughs> the, the, all the washboard so i was super pleased i came in i did not think i would win that stage i ended up winning that stage and so there we go i ended up winning well all played, three stages man. so what'd you get what'd you get the uh the victory thing was a was a flask it actually says cascade gravel grinder first place small grinder thank you chad sperry for the flask did you put some monster in there i want to put my lacroix in there should i put my lacroix in here <laughs> So. Dude, that's pretty cool. So yeah, so I ended up. So that was way better than I thought. You know, I did way better than I thought. Um, I could hardly walk the rest of the day. My, it was funny. I couldn't walk around or stand up straight because my back and my hip and the crash. But when I got on the bike, it was like full adrenaline. Let's go. Forget all this. Do it to it. Yeah. So. So you're hurting right now. So I'm hurting right now. And what are you doing this weekend? Um. There's a mountain bike race back uh -huh. in Bend this weekend, which is part of a series. So I'm gonna go down there and do it to it. Give it a go. So you use we'll this to take the edge off of the. Uh... <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna I'm gonna fill this with monster or uh, yeah. Lacroix. Yeah. Lacroix. Something. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that was that. So I ended up having a great weekend. I won all three stages. Um, Congrats on the Masters win. men. Funny, believe it or not, yesterday um, the open men in the small grinder i ended up uh beating all the open men by a couple minutes as well um mostly because it looked like there was a group of looking at the results there was a group of five that all finished within seconds of each other so i'm guessing they were posturing for the last yep. five or six miles and not racing not mm -hmm. going hard just like trying to set each other up sizing each other up for yeah. that uh little sprint finish huh yeah cool. so so it was a good day I had some teammates out there. Chris Surratt did the big grinder. John Hatfield did the big grinder. Andy Levine, Gary Cornelius, they uh, they were all out there racing as well. Scott Carroll? Scott Carroll went out to the coast and did Mike Ripley's events. Oh, that's right. Okay. So he did the Oregon Coast Gravel Epic and the West Coast Gravel. Who else was out there for that? Um, nobody from our team. Really? Was at, at the coast that I yeah. recall. He won his category. Yes. Yep. Yeah, so it's Scott won both his category both days. Yeah, good on him. Yeah, that. so good on Scott Carroll. So fun. That's enough. I've told too many stories. I raced my bike. I'm missing skin, and there we go. Welcome back, standard home. standard <laughs> update. Standard update. <laughs> Um, how about we do a little Patreon? We haven't done a, a Patreon. Patreon in a whole week. It's Gosh. been a whole week. <laughs> oh, um, real quick, Sarah Gates was out there, wasn't she? That's she, right. She was on the podcast a few weeks yes. ago with the uh, the um, right around Oregon thing. The cycle, cycle Oregon. Oregon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how did she do? Um, she did well. She she raced the small grinder. Is that Ian? She yeah. she raced the she raced the small grinder uh -huh. um, in the Masters Women and she did well. She cheered me on. We talked to each other several times uh, before and after, so that was all kind of cool. 
right on. So, Good job. Yeah. Cool. All right. So Patreon stuff. Um, we've got a huge grab bag of things. They're still down here. If your name gets drawn, um, give us a shout. Let us know when you want to come by. Or if you're uh, not in the area, we can definitely send it to you. Matt's going to pull a name out of the hat here or the, the jar that we have. Of the remaining people who haven't won recently, um, who you got? The Wick family. The Wick family. The whole family. The whole the family. family. The whole fam damly. Cool. Uh, the Wicks get to come down here and pull something out of that uh, That Fantastic. Bin. Don't put that back, Matt. We're keeping oh, the winners right. separate. Right. Yeah. New rules. <laughs> New rules. <laughs> there you go. Mm. Parody here. Cool. If you are interested in becoming a Patreon, you can go to dialpodcast.com and you can pull up the Patreon link there. Go and check that out and see what Patreon works best for you. We really greatly appreciate the support from yes. everybody. It's fantastic. Yeah, thank it helps you. us put on this little dog and pony show here. Um, moving forward. Champ Bailey. Top Ooh. five. I think he's in the top five discussion. I mean, I'm not just going to go out crazy. Hall of Famer. 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 I don't know about Bailey. that, though. Champ Bailey by Champ Bailey. What up, Champ Bailey? Champ Bailey here. In the studio. Welcome back. I'm here for you. It's been a couple weeks. Um, actually, don't have a whole lot to talk about because I haven't paid a whole lot of attention because I've been in my van for two and a half weeks. Living in the van um, down by the river. <laughs> a couple of things I wanted to talk about. The Tour de Romandie. Okay. Where was that? Is it in? It's in Romandy. I think it's in Switzerland. I want to say. Anyway. Um, uh, Geraint Thomas G yep. ended up winning the overall. The big story was the fact that uh, on the day before the final stage, it was a rainy, wet, nasty day, and G Thomas was just about to win, and he lost his handlebars, his oh. arm slipped off, and he crashed like in the finishing stretch Oof. without anybody around him, and Mike Woods ended up winning the stage. So I haven't seen any of the video. I've just been reading the news because I've been right yeah. li living in my van. So it's been a, a whole different ball game. And then, um, it, but he ended up winning the whole thing by uh, blitzing the final time trial. Yep, and that so, makes sense. Yeah, so he just time trialist it. Yeah. Other than that, uh, what else was there? There's a triathlon race. Yes, please tell us. Oh, yes. St. George, uh, George. 70.3. There yep. was a bunch of people down there. Tell us about that. Uh, so Daniel, Dan Daniela Reif is like the world champion. And she doesn't usually show up to that race. And, you know, she's from Europe and she just doesn't usually come over. She shows up, crushes the women's field, uh, does pretty well. Then on the guy's side, it was actually a pretty solid race. Um so Evan and I always, you know, who do you think is going to win? Who do you think is going to win? And Lionel Sanders has been doing really well lately, and he actually was able to pull out the victory, but it was extremely close in the last 5K. Uh, he and a guy named Sam Long were, and they're friends, uh, but they're it's both very like. Sam Long and who? Sam Long and Lionel Sanders. And Lionel Sanders, okay. In the last 5K were toe-to-toe. -to -toe all the way down to like probably 1k to go or less. They're so running together. Running toe to toe, yep. Oh, and uh, love that. so basically Sam takes a drink at the last aid station and Lionel like goes and that was enough to make it happen and they were they went to the well. It was a cool race to just see the finish of. I didn't see all of it obviously because you don't get that good of coverage anywhere. I think but, I saw uh, like a little clip, clip or of something. the finish where where Sanders Sam came across and just was done, ruined. Yeah, and and Sam like Long collapsed. same thing. Sam Long just comes in, <laughs> lays like goes straight through the finish line, lays down, and he kicks his shoes off. Like I'm like, why are you taking your shoes off, buddy? <laughs> he just lays down, and, but <laughs> right in the finish stretch, lays down, takes first his thing shoes he off. does, kicks his shoes off. I'm like you must not like those. You <laughs> must not like those shoes. Anyway, uh, it was a good race. There was actually a ton of pros there. It was a pretty stacked field. You know, obviously you get world champion coming over from the on the women's side, but That's it's just amazing. A, yeah, it was a it was a pretty good race. It's good to see some triathlon races happening right it, at all, and so I feel lucky to at least be able to see some things. You know, I didn't actually see a lot of live stuff because I supposedly they were going to do it on like Facebook Live or something like that. I wasn't it able to happen. find it the morning of, but. And then, you know, we go bike riding on didn't, Saturday. Didn't so. Matt Lieto, wasn't he out there commentating? I don't know. That sounds possible. I, I think he was. He to do. Yeah. And then I saw him on Sunday in Sisters uh, at the uh, at the gravel grinder. He Did wasn't he race? racing, but yeah. he was just – I stopped and talked to him a little bit. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he – I would bet you'll start to see him at some of those races. I think he likes to do, you know, off-road stuff. Yeah, he does. Yeah. 
yeah, I, yeah. he was asking me what my plans were for the rest of the year, and I'm like, well, I'm trying to decide between the Oregon Trail Gravel Grinder and the Baker City Cycling Classic, and he's like, don't you know road racing's dead? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what he said, and I'm like, well, yeah, you're right. So we had a couple teammates that did the race. Uh, John Hoffman went yeah. out there and did the race, and... Um, Lisa kind of, Worms? Oh, Lisa Worms did it? Right. Yep. And Joshua Monda, yep, he, right. He kind of crushed it. Tell us what how he did. He, he was didn't... well. All I know is results. I, all I know is like from what I see from Instagram, which was tenth place, and I'm not sure if that's like tenth place in the. I think it was tenth place amateur. Amateur race. Yeah. Fourth place. in his fourth age in his group. Fourth in the age group. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Which is kind of amazing. He was pretty happy with that. I'm pretty sure. So that's excellent. Okay, I had a question. Sure. It looked like there were 2,300 participants. How did they do that? Do you have any idea? They threw caution to the wind. Okay, I just, don't, I just was curious. Oh, I know, I'm, I'm I know sure Utah they... thinks they're their own country. <laughs> <laughs> they so have their own rules in Utah. The original rules was like stagger start everything, and even the exchange, like everything is staggered out. So you know you have rolling starts for the swim, and then you have um, all the you know transition zones. All the stuff is spread out six feet okay. as well. I don't know if that's exactly what they did in this particular race, but I, didn't I saw see. some video of people running out of T1, and it looked like a normal triathlon race, like no one was, you know. Wow. Yeah. So, don't know. All don't right. know. I don't know either. Cool. That's a lot of people. Champ Bailey out. More try talk. More try talk. <laughs> All right, let's move on into our topic for today. What are we talking about? I'm not missing anything. I didn't skip over anything, did I? No. I haven't done that before in my time. But uh-uh. Now, we're going to talk about bike computers today. Oh, boy. I've been threatening to put out a bike computer that Lance and I filmed like three years ago. <laughs> we filmed it a while ago. <laughs> no, you guys are so still, much younger in this video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I now have a different facial you, you, hair. I was going to mention that. <laughs> you had more skin back then. I don't know. There was something I had, different. I wasn't so bloody. <laughs> yep. I just need more time, Lance. There's no time. Uh, anyway, it, Matt's possible. got a video that's coming out here pretty soon, and um, there's a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline. I get people coming into the lab all the time. Really? Like, hey, I need to get a bike computer. What what should I get? And it's really one of those things where right. for the longest time it was an easy answer for me, but now it's it's kind of like, I don't know, it's split decision here. It, it could go one way or another. Lance and I did a video basically uh, comparing and contrasting the Wahoo for, and the Garmin. I was using the 530, Lance was, u- Lance was using the 830, yep. and we both did this little video to check out the Wahoo Element Roam. Yep. Things changed. Yeah. Yeah. And opinions changed. Okay, so <laughs> we should talk about uh, price points. Price point on the Garmin 800 is $400, Correct. I think. 830 is $400. The, so the Wahoo Roam costs less by a little bit, $380. 20 bucks less, yeah. So, you know, there's definitely something to be said there, you know, as far as saving money goes. Then you go to the 530, uh-huh. you're dropping all the way down to $300. $300 for the 530. Which I think is pretty good value. And then uh, the Wahoo Bolt is priced at 220 I believe you're correct. Yeah. yeah. 220 or 230 something like Somewhere, that. Yeah, right in there. So, I should know that. But uh, I will have to look up the price on the Brighton. This is called the... This is called the Brighton um, Ride 750, but I'll check the price on that. And I think it's l- it's touchscreen and things like that, but it's significantly less price than the 800 from Garmin. So have you used what's the other one that some people are using? Is the Hammerhead? The Hammerhead Karoo. And they yeah. just came out with a second edition, the Hammerhead yeah. Karoo 2, and that looks excellent. That's about $400. Uh huh. And uh, really snappy touchscreen you're basically i mean it's it's a phone operating system so it's going to work very similar to like gotcha. your phone it's android operating system that looks really good now talking would, about touchscreens yes. we've kind of lamented about them before in the past <coughs> and the 530 not 530 uh the 830, 830? and the oh, 820 sorry, 830. the 820 was just hot garbage i mean it, it, was, it was a mess it was yeah. too too sensitive yeah yeah it was, and then it was a known issue and they actually mid manufacturing they basically switched the touchscreen and so it act, it did get better on certain sure. iterations of the device yeah but man that was a mess yeah and then their 830 is the newer one which is you know it's still some problems, some issues, but they've got some workarounds. They've made the the screen a little bit better. You can yep. lock it out. It r- works really well for dry climate areas. For the most of the time. And for those that don't like to sweat all over it. I have roughly 15,000 miles on this computer. Wow. So I've put a lot of miles on this computer, and 
in race situations where I'm really getting after it and I'm yeah. sweating on it, um, it it will change the screen. Yes, if because the sweat will drip onto yep. the face and it will like end up changing the screen. So I've come to terms with uh, when I'm in. racing, I have to lock out the touch screen. Yeah. yeah, and if you 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 change pages by swiping on the screen like you would on mm -hmm. your iPhone. Yeah. yeah. And it the swiping still works. Oh, good. That's so good. So you you can still swipe from screen to screen because I would switch back and forth between power numbers and and right. navigation. Sure. For racing. But you can't like change a data field, which is what your sweat does. It'll yes. drop in the same spot. And it sits there. And then it, it, it drops down there and then the next drop down is like, you want to change your data field. Yeah. You're like, let's change that to something absolutely stupid right. like wind speed right like right. weather wind speed or something so you're like damn it i really needed my power so with all of your experience in using that computer you've ridden through all of the nasty winter stuff yeah how does that work with gloves um i i have to be careful with the types of gloves i buy yeah. uh -huh. F full finger types of gloves i have to check it that it will work on the computer and even the ones that do sometimes they give you problems sometimes they give you trouble yeah yeah true so I even have a pair of winter gloves that I cut a slit in where I can mm -hmm. slip my finger out. <laughs> oh, jeez. So that I can change screens. So you're ruining a I nice pair of gloves. Yes. Yeah. Now, I will say, like, regular rain doesn't affect it too much. Mm -hmm. But, like, mud or chunky stuff, like if I'm racing it on something and a chunk of mud lands on the screen, <laughs> that will change it sometimes, okay. too. Let me ask you a question. Why did you choose the 830 over the 530? I mean... For all practical reasons, they do the same thing. I mean, they, they're they're pretty stinking close to the same thing. They yeah. are they are very very similar. In fact, you know, when you even talk to Garmin, they'll say like these are the same computers except for the touch screen. It's interesting to me that they didn't add the same buttons uh, over here because that would have been like an additional manufacturing cost to even eliminate the buttons. I I don't understand why they didn't have like if you look at the five thirty, you'll see you've got something like I don't know five There's buttons. One two there. three. There's one, two, five three, four, five, six, yeah, seven so buttons. If you keep Six all the buttons, buttons you could completely you could, lock out the, the touch yep. screen for conditions like that. Or if you yeah. want to ride in the winter with buttons. I went back to this after having the 820 that I sold right. to a friend down in southern, sunny Southern California who doesn't have any issues with it whatsoever. And I did it in favor of having buttons because I just I couldn't stand the fact that yeah. it was such yeah. a pain in the butt with fingered gloves that you couldn't get it to do what you wanted I, to do. You know, I had the 820 beforehand. Um, the screen wasn't that good. I just decided to stay with it uh -huh. yeah. with the 830, and it, it's actually with the touchscreen. It's easier to set up it's your profiles, your activity profiles, change screen. It's not. Yeah. It's yeah. not more. It's just easier and quicker to do. What I noticed when I was using the 530 was that I always because of the way that so because these are the same computer, you're basically the UI of the actual computer, it looks very touchscreen friendly. So you're constantly like, oh yeah, I just want to do that. And I want to, you know, it's like your instinct is to touch the screen. And it's yeah. really like big design, big buttons, big highlights of yeah. items. Touchscreen makes a lot of sense for any sort of changing data fields, any sort of settings, all of that stuff. Touchscreen's the way to go for sure. And having it potentially like the, what they could have done is just lock it out and then use buttons when you're basically riding. That would have been like the sweet spot. That would have been yeah, perfect. Right. right. But yeah, that would have caused that. me to spend an extra hundred bucks to get that. I would yeah. have done that because like in the summer months, yeah, it is nice to be able to like touch and then for the setup, it's nice to be able to touch. Oh yeah. Versus like the five thirty. You know, it's all buttons, but I equate yeah. that to like back in the day when we had to text using a QWERTY keyboard on a phone. You're pushing <laughs> well, right. the button three times to get a, a C right. or something like that. It's That's kind of what it feels like sometimes. I do think after you've ridden with a computer for, what, three, four weeks or something like that, yeah. like it's all second nature. Like you can probably even, you know, something more complicated, like go find a new sensor for a new device, like a new power meter or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like you can probably search for it like almost you know, oh, without yeah. even looking at yeah, the screen. Yeah. It's like, it's yeah, if this, you hold this button and then it's down, 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 up, that one, select. And then it's like, you once you learn those buttons and it becomes muscle memory, you're great. Yeah. But when you're switching between a whole bunch of different bike computers or whatever, uh, the touch screen is, it looks significantly yeah. more like Before we intuitive. Get too much further into this, let's just sure. run around the table and talk about what computer we go to as our primary and then what computers we've been using for a while now, just so people can have a little bit of a, a background on, on what it is and what we've been yeah. using and where we come from and what our thought process was um, when we talk about where we're at now. 
So Matt, what have you been using? I mean, tell us a little bit about your history and, and sure. what you're currently using right now. Yeah, so I have always used kind of like um, Garmin's 500 series. So it's yeah. like 500, 510. And then I did the, uh, I went and I bumped up and I got the 820, which was a nightmare. Exact same stuff that Lance was talking about. I'd be in TT position, just sweating on it. And it like, I don't want in a race, I don't want anything. I just want like power. I need to like look at my power numbers and that's it. Like I really don't yeah. need much. And so it's like changing the screen. I'm getting super frustrated. I'm having in the middle of a race to like wipe the screen, you know, make, you don't want to get out of TT position when yeah. you're racing. And so um, that was a, a hot piece of garbage. And uh, I still have it. I pretended to throw it away in the trash can, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I got this computer uh, almost exactly a year ago, this is the Wahoo Element Bolt. Uh-huh. Uh, I got it because I was like, you know what? I don't need anything big. I don't need anything crazy. And I have been super pleased with this device. Um, that being said, it's, it's a four-year-old device from Wahoo. So it's very long in the tooth. It's... Um, it's very functional. Buttons are great locations. Uh, you're not going to get like great mapping or anything like that. You don't have like a huge screen by any means. Yeah. But it works. It yep. works really well. I love the indicator lights that you don't see on any of the other devices. That's um, slick. Yeah. The the button placement gets really important when you actually start to think about like when you have your bike computer like right off the front of the handlebars. Uh, if you look at like Garmin, the way they have their start and stop button, it's like way underneath the handlebars. Yeah, so yeah, if it's in line with the handlebars, yeah, you're pinching your finger between the bar and the thing, did. and you're like, this is stupid. with winter with winter gloves, it's hard to push. It's impossible. And so yeah. and then you look at like the Wahoo, any of the Wahoo devices, and you're like, start. <laughs> yeah, like, it's right on the front. Like, yeah, yeah, that makes so much sense. Uh, and then, you know, a thing that I think a lot of people will say about the garment or the Wahoo that's fantastic is being able to kind of like zoom in on a particular data field. You just super easy. You can have on this particular device, you can have nine data fields and you can just tap, tap, tap and zoom in onto like one or two yeah, data fields. I, it's so nice. I personally, it's nice to have. I usually on my primary screen have 10 data fields on right. there. And some people are like, why? But I, I just, I use all those metrics for a different reason. I use them, but yeah. you prioritize them from one to 10. And on that, like Matt said, you can zoom in you and it isolate. will just start to like drop off the yep. ones that are they're not quite as important, but it's super simple to get them back. Whereas yeah. Garmin, to be able to have a field like that or have a page that looks like that, Dude. you have to go through and you know change yeah. the pages and all that other stuff. And you got to remember which one was which, and then you're 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 pushing buttons and you're looking at a computer. You're not riding your bike looking forward like you should be. Right. right. So yeah, I think the Wahoo Roam can do eleven different data fields or something like that. I something could be wrong. Like that, yeah. Yeah. Or so, twelve, I think. Or twelve, possibly. Yeah. Anyway, and it's, it's a lot. It's just super easy to to zoom in and out on yeah. different screens on yeah. the Wahoo. I've yeah. been using the five thirty a good bit lately because I'm testing it for a video, and yep. I'm going to give the five thirty away in the video because you know it was passed on to me from Garmin. I love that device. It's, it's a nice device, yeah. You're talking about like a significantly nicer screen than, well, nicer is relative, right? Like we talked about this, Lance. Like the Bolt probably has the best visibility in direct sunlight, but when you get larger screens, <coughs> it's kind of nice. You can see more. If, yeah. If you look, if you're, you're locking on the screen on YouTube right now, you can see my the glare, the glare the on the rough. on yeah. the Garmin. The, it glares quite a bit, and the Wahoo does not. Well, I got it to glare a little yeah. bit. Right in the sunshine, there. though. In the can, sunshine, it does not. From experience, we can tell you that it's much easier. It's to way easier to, easier to see to in the sunshine. Yeah, we did that like, video comparison where we yeah. looked at like what was easy to see, and we thought that the Bolt was the best, and then I think we thought the Roam, and then the 530 and 830, and then way back was like the you know 820 and things like right. that. Those were significantly worse. But I still think it's like, as long as you're in the realm of those top couple devices, they're all pretty good. And actually, the other one that we should be talking about is the Garmin 135, 130, 130 plus. 130 yep. plus. Yeah. Actually, I mean that's a that's a two hundred dollar device. Uh, no, the one, not as oh, many bells the, and whistles. The one thirty. Sorry, I was thinking. I was thinking right. of the ten thirty. Sorry. Yeah. Well, the ten thirty is the big one. That's a six hundred dollar yeah. unit. That's yes. their flagship. Yeah. Their, their big There's, Yeah, they have but the ten thirty plus. The one thirty is the one that you were talking about. That's uh, a pretty entry level. It's pretty inexpensive. But here's the thing: it does a lot of. I mean, yep. you've got, you've got really good GPS. You've got a lot of data that you can you can actually do some mountain biking stuff. It even has like those weird mountain bike jump metrics. It's got a lot of stuff, and it's you know under two hundred dollars, which yep. none of these other devices are. And, uh, you know, if you don't need everything, people should consider that one as well. You know, you can even do your radar with it. A lot sure. of the stuff that we think is like, this is stuff that I'm not willing to, you know, take compromise a break, on. Compromise. Yeah. Like, 
I don't think any of us would do a computer that doesn't have the radar capabilities. No, so I, I don't like writing without that. No. Yeah. So currently you're using the Element Bolt and you're using a 530 that you're testing out for, I'm assuming, a video that you're going to be making. Right. I'm using the 530 and I do have the 1030 as well. You have the 1030? Yeah, the okay. 1030. And it's, okay. I love that one because, and, and that one is just like massive screen. It's, it's a $600 computer. Yep. And, uh, but you get, I think, so I, I'm going to mess up the metrics, but it's like you're getting, I don't know, a, I would say about 35% extra real estate on the screen. It's yeah. a lot of space. It's yeah. a big, you know, and so for me, I'm thinking like, oh, if we were to ever do one of those kind of like adventure rides, like yeah. we talked about this, like we're like, let's just go try and find some, the longest gravel road that we can do and like sure. bike pack and bring like overnight kit and try and do something like that's the computer I would take for that. Like no doubt in my mind. Right. Good battery life. It's got the battery Great pack battery that you can, you can add to it, yep. which gives it super long battery life. I um, also think that Garmin does a better job, generally speaking, on navigation. That is their wheelhouse. The, I mean, that's one um, of the things that they're truly known for. The maps on the Garmin are more detailed. They're better. With road names. With road names. With, you know, you can see trails. It, it's... Yeah. It's it, got the Trail Forks integration in there, correct? It does have Trail Forks integration. So if you're in a mountain bike area, the names of the trails that you're actually riding on pop up mm -hmm, that's crazy. and show you the whole trail system if you want to see it. And you don't get that with Wow. And that seems like it would be such a simple thing to add to some firmware. You think? Yep. I, well, I, I mean, mean, it's a big database, right? I guess. I mean, is it just a licensing thing that, that Garmin's paying to Trail Forks? Garmin add? has history on navigation that goes so far back. I just have this yeah. feeling that that they're not going to just give that database out to anyone. That's possible. But the, right. the Trail Forks thing isn't a Trail Garmin Forks thing. Is a, yeah. It, that's not Garmin. You're right. So, I mean, it would be a, just a third-party licensing thing, I, I believe, to be able to use. Yeah. Unless they that's have some sort of exclusive agreement or yeah. something like that. So, you know, if you were to add Trail Forks and you were to add Climb Pro to yeah. the Wahoo, Lance, would you still be using Garmin? No. No. So, I mean, that, what that's about, a, Is there anything from Connect IQ that you use? Connect IQ is Garmin's, like... Per, per, it's kind of their like app uh, store, app store. Yeah. yeah which i think is i think it's huge um it's not something that i use but i think it's like it's one of those things where you can really customize your device you can really add functionality to it if you're some sort of I small down, manufacturer and all the years i've used garmin yeah. i've downloaded one thing from the app yeah. store the iq store and that was the strava um bit that you can <coughs> plug in there so that i could use the strava routes but now that's all like native all it's native. like you don't even need, you don't need that anymore. anymore so i i just don't go in there it's just right. not something i need yeah. yeah i don't i don't use anything from yeah. garmin connect my so the videos that i'm making so i'm going to talk about this one because i'll this video will come out first i'll do like a hey this this is me after a year of using this and i that's the bolt i'll tell people at the end of the video like i'm hesitant to recommend this it's four years old yeah i mean if, if you want to buy this like by all means there's no problem with it it's very solid device they did they're still updating software on it there was an april software update for this sure and it's like fantastic device i have no problems with the only hesitation is it's four years old. Wahoo should probably update this Long at some Long in the point. tooth. Yeah. And yeah. whispers are out there that maybe there's a Bolt 2-ish thing coming down the pipeline. We, Nobody knows no for idea. sure, but it's it's imminent that it, it was going to come. You'd think. But when? Yeah, yeah we don't know. It could question. be a year from now. The, the reason that I would recommend the 530 is because I don't know a lot of the people that I'm recommending these devices sure. to. They may want the aero meter that's only going to work with Garmin with Connect IQ. They may be mountain yeah. bikers and to be honest i think that the garmin devices are better for mountain biking with the mountain biking metrics that they're that are new to the 530 do you ever use those did you i've been using a 530 for almost two years did you use the like what do they call their they have they have they have flow ratings they flow have jump grit times and grit and grit yeah personally i think those they're, are all gimmicky yeah they're like made up <laughs> metrics right but like i think eventually it could be something in where but it's like this trail is this rating like that would be kind of interesting where you know, yeah, you have Strava, but you also have like, well, how well did I ride this trail? Yeah. So I think that kind of comes back to being a bit of a subjective thing. Um, yeah. For mm -hmm. somebody like Lance, who's always out gallivanting around the world and jumping out of the adventure band on his uh, his bike, and he's going to go try some new trail stuff. 
that's a good thing for him to have the trail right. forks and, and being able to know the trail names and where to go and, and all that yeah. ma- mapping stuff. That's, that's been great. super helpful yeah. with the Garmin. I'm a creature of habit, right. and, you know, and I don't get out and do that kind of stuff very often because right. that just, that's where I'm at. That's my station right. in life. So uh, it's very seldom that I would actually take advantage of that. So when I actually use the Garmin, it's just, it's not me. It's me just using it to capture data from the ride, not telling me where to go. Yeah. I, I would go even further than that and say like, we don't even need mapping most of the time. Like no. m- almost all the time I go right, I'm like, I know where I'm going. And if I get lost, I'm kind of pumped yeah. up about it. No, right? I, I mean, do use it pretty often. The because mapping? The ma- well, yeah, because um, I'm not necessarily getting lost, but we do all kinds of stuff and we'll load courses in. Like if we're going to go do a team mm-hmm. ride in a new right. area, I'll load in the, the course. Yep. And that way I know where we're turning, if I get ahead you or if I get behind. Up. Or you can see yep. like the climbs that are coming up. To, uh, we'll, we'll get into the climb pro in just a moment, yeah. minute. But, um, you know, that kind of stuff I think has value to it. But, you know, if we're going to go out and do a flogging ride, do I load a course in? No, because no. I know that like you the back of my hand. And yeah. like if we're going to go do the beaches ride, oh, no, do that. I know that yeah. by the back right. of my hand. Right. So yeah. I I don't use it all that often. The segments, I, I absolutely adore the segments. And right. I think that's actually, for me, it's a huge ups sell and i'm leaning towards one product over another because of that right now and i'll get into that in a moment well and also i mean you know ergonomics i think we probably have beat this to death but like this is so much better you know like any of the wahoo products i think ergonomics are just better of the using of the device like indicator lights are great the buttons are great yeah i think that's probably you know and then maybe the buttons for zooming in on data field. Sure. Like I think those three things like, yeah, I mean, I've been using a Garmin since, um, gosh, 2007. I think right. in the live comments uh, here on YouTube, uh, Jerry Delport said the edge 305. I had that unit back in like 2007 or 2008. Yeah. And I had that for a lot of years and you know, it, it is what it was. And I've used every iteration of a Garmin computer since then, <laughs> literally every single unit I've used. And I've seen all of the growth over the course of time. Yeah. And they've gotten better over the course of time with the exception of the har- garbage. Uh, 820 that was a mess that yeah. was a yeah, and so a i've cup. been i've been a garment person i've lived in their yep. ecosystem forever and a day and wahoo came out with their stuff i'm like oh that's great i i don't necessarily like the way that it looks you know i think that it's it's a little bit taller of a device that the bolt and you know mm-hmm. it's it's somebody that's new to the market let them kind of you know figure their things out and come back and then go from there then the the rome came out and that caught my attention Right. And I had a lot of people coming into the lab saying, hey, do you have the Wahoo fill in the blank? I'm like, yeah, tell me what you like about it. And they would always say, oh, I've been doing my research or I had this one and now I want to upgrade or whatever. And it was always good, positive feedback. And almost all of these people came from a Garmin background. I'm like, huh, we need to, to look into try this. this out. You know, yeah. and the website, they're selling all day long. And, you know, it's one of those things where I finally said, you know, let's let's do a little thing on this. Let's do a video. Let's go out there and use this thing for a month or two and see what we think. Uh, Lance did a fantastic job of diving into that. Um, me, not so much because I've just been so stinking busy, but I did use it and I continue to use it. And yeah. there's good reason why I continue to use it. I think it's a fantastic computer. I think that it's better. Th- the Wahoo Element Roam, I think, is the best computer that you can purchase on the market right now. That's just my two cents. But I, there's a couple little things that are missing from it, and those things don't matter to me so much as they do to say Lance. So again, yeah. subjective. But I think that yeah. with a couple simple tweaks, they could integrate Trail Forks, they can integrate Climb Pro, yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like the computer to go to. It's the right size. It's very easy to view. The setup on it, the setup on the Wahoo stuff is yeah. so simple. At first, I'm like, really, you have to use your phone. I don't want to have a phone around it to do that. And I think, well, I've always got my phone with me, and I'm never setting things up on it while I'm out on a ride. Although one of the first few times I used it, I did, and it was super simple, and it just happened right there, and it was so much faster. It is I very it, seamless and easy to set up. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a, you know, it's a positive and a negative in a lot of ways because you, yes, you set up with the phone, set up all the data fields that you want. It's awesome. It's so much easier to set things up with your phone. But when you want to change data field on the fly and you're out there and then you're like, I guess I have to you break have to pull out your my phone, phone up. But you know what? Field. We you, should have a race and say on your mark, get set, go to change a data <laughs> field and I'll pull out my phone and you dig into your Garmin. I'm going to smoke you. On the you. touch screen, you just hold it Not on it the down. touch screen. Oh, you just, just on the touch screen. Okay. You just hold way down the faster data on the touch on the okay. on the yeah. eight thirty. But okay. all you so, do is hold down the data field, and okay. it'll be select your options. Yeah, I didn't go down the path of after yeah. hot garbage, so <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. All against the touch screen garbage stuff. It's just not my jam. But okay, that that's good. But for but, anything other than touch screen, you're, and you don't, you shouldn't have to change your data fields that no, often. No, no. But it is a complaint that people have. So, so let me ask you another thing: firmware updates. Have you guys ever had any issues with firmware updates with Garmin? And you see it all the time. People purposefully don't update 
the firmware they're, because man. of the issues that come down the pipeline. Jake, you've had issues with it. Oh, you I've can, had all the issues. You can basically brick your device with oh, yeah. the firmware yeah. update. Yeah, yeah. I Which can't tell you how many times that I've had to do a factory reset on it and mm-hmm. then set it all up all over from the very scratch yeah. beginning. And that is a hassle and a half. I think that's what happens is people get so frustrated with Garmin. They're yeah. like, I'm looking for something other than Garmin. What are my options? And yeah. it's like, that's Wahoo. It's yeah. your, you yeah. know, that's your other option a lot so, of times, but. I've had so many times where it, it will. I'll, I've got my ten little fields up there, right? And I'll go back after doing a firmware update, and I'll look, and like half of them are changed to some other random thing. I'm like, why? What the hell? What, what are you doing? <laughs> I've had it to where it will add like no joke, like five or six new pages of like you're scrolling through, and it's like ten units of this is how fast you're going. Yeah. Ten ten different little boxes of right. telling you how fast you're going. I'm like, well, that's <laughs> right. stupid. Yeah. And that happens all the time. Uh, about three weeks ago, my Garmin just reset itself it factory reset itself oh, nice. yeah. i didn't i didn't Did do you that sweat on it yeah <laughs> i must have sweated on it but it complete like i lost all my activity profiles Ooh, i lost yeah. all my history i the history everything it completely factory reset and i don't know why it did that yeah and yeah, we've got some listeners and watchers on youtube right now if you guys had any issues or things that you want to chime in with uh post it up on the comment section and we'll talk about that as well or yeah kind of fun to have a little interaction there but yeah anyway so for me personally, I'm currently using the Wahoo Element Roam. Now, I did use the uh, Garmin 530 yesterday on my mountain bike ride. Did and you? it wasn't because I was trying to use flow and grit and all that other fun Jumps. stuff. Yeah. How far could you jump? Yeah, How I, high I, did you jump? I didn't get to my <laughs> metric on that 50 foot gap that it's I cleared. because you yeah. didn't have a mount for it on your mountain bike. 100% right. Well, yep. not, it was because <laughs> yeah. the one that I didn't, I wouldn't have an ability to run the GoPro. I wanted to take the GoPro yeah. with me just, you know, because I like to take pictures. That's a small thing, but like mounts are real. Like a lot of the bikes are integrating these mounts right yeah. now, which I think is super cool, but yeah. they're all integrating them for Garmin. Well, all of these mounts are slightly different. The new There's, BMC mounts all come they're 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 longer so they can house a bigger computer so the older ones right. you can't put anything bigger than a 530 on there yeah right um, 530 so or 830 they've got a little yeah. bit longer so it actually can house a 1030 and it comes with two different mounts you pick and choose whether you're going to run garmin or wahoo so that's two but there's more than two bike companies on the market no, there's, there's not you know no there's, there's not <laughs> well, there's only two well i think that we really should be taking <laughs> the cr- not well i mean brighton's solid actually it's a solid device with um with does it work with radar, radar? Yes. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah, right. and it's way more, it's, and it's more affordable, <laughs> and it's a touchscreen, which is maybe a negative. But nope, like that's it, good. There's a lot of great. And but I think the the real competition that both of like, I think maybe Garmin should be more concerned about the Karoo Hammerhead two than they are of Wahoo completely. Really, I think it's that interesting of a product. Yeah. Okay. And I haven't seen one or mess with them. I'm curious. Too. Yeah. Well, you've got uh, basically you've got developers iterating very quickly on an Android device. I just think like that's going to be the <laughs> ticket. I like Jesse Tonkinson's uh, little chime in right here. You guys want to read that out loud real quick? <laughs> what device Evan could figure out and how to use it? <laughs> <laughs> Something simpler. <laughs> now Evan does have paper the and pen. Uh, element he's Rome, but yeah, he's still handwriting his times and whatnot. He's right. the Rome. No, did I say Rome? I'm sorry, the bolt. Here's the, the bolt. bolt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. This is pretty straightforward. Like, if you were to go buy one for your parents, i.e., Evan, <laughs> um, <laughs> for, for sake so, so, so that you, And he won't yeah. listen to it either, so he's <laughs> not even going to hear this. So that you're not going to be playing uh, tech support. Who are you gonna who are you going to turn your parents on to for a computer? Maybe that one the uh 135 or so 130 now so? I'd, I'd say the wahoo it's just simpler simpler yeah because yeah. they've all kind of come around they kind of understand basically how to use a uh a smartphone now yeah. and right. i think that they've probably seen a qr code and, and once you figure those two things out you're, you're kind in. of like there i mean it's going to be a pretty easy process from that point forward so um you were saying though real quick about the hammerhead yeah you think that that's really going to be like the big? I think that they are doing more interesting things. I think that they're developing faster. Okay, and so it's really hard because, y- you know, people will say that you're never going to be Garmin on features. They are just feature rich, yeah, feature rich. And then you've got Connect IQ, so you have a whole third party system. And so that's why I think Garmin is. If I don't know you, that's the easy recommendation, right? Okay, because you may need something that this computer doesn't have, and it might be a deal breaker for you for you know us that's like we need radar like we won't do a computer without radar if you don't know someone i still think the you know something like the 535 or yeah 530 is just like a straightforward recommendation Mm -hmm. i think it's a solid option uh i think that 
some a company like Carew is iterating quickly and they're gaining on Garmin on a lot of the whole like feature rich piece. And then you, they've also got the usability. They've got a very responsive touchscreen. I don't know how that the would... mapping looks really good on it too. And you got a very bright screen. Bright screen. Yeah. I, I just don't. I don't. I haven't played with it. I don't know if you take it in the shower, does it like fritz out and fall apart? Like I don't know yeah. what's going to happen. Um, but I really, yeah. I'll, I'll reach out and get something to test at some point. They're four hundred dollars. Yeah, four hundred bucks. So it's right in the wheelhouse with all. of I mean, that's kind of a similar price to the the Rome and the eight thirty. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the Rome should come down in price. And I think you that, think so? Why? Yeah, I think the Bolt should be under two hundred dollars. If I, I were, if I were Wahoo, with you, yeah. if I were Wahoo, this would be one ninety nine, and I think the Bolt would be maybe three. The Rome, you mean? Sorry, the Rome, maybe like three and a quarter, could, something like that. Yeah, three forty nine ninety nine or something yeah. like that, maybe in that range. But like that would be like, oh yeah, this is the yeah. It is kind of halfway between where the uh, the five thirty and the eight thirty yep. is. Yeah. It doesn't have yeah. a touch screen. It doesn't function, have a touch screen. I mean, fine by that me, is a very competitive computer when you put it up against the 530. Yeah. But I don't know if it's, I mean, yeah, the, this is just touch screen added, but I don't know. Tough call. Cool. Um, I. What what knocks do you guys have on Wahoo? <laughs> what, are, what are your big knocks? Mine's um, the, go ahead. Memory. That is a big problem. That's that's an issue this that I dealt like with. Two point four gigabytes memory compared to the Garmin, which is like sixteen or something yeah. like that. That seems like an easy thing to fix. Yeah. Now you're not but storing a ton of ton of data on there. Yeah. I mean, your your rides they they don't really add up to too much, but they are capturing quite a bit of information. But the the part that really kind of causes the Rome to suffer are the maps. The maps yes. take up a big chunk of that. Most and of the memory, yeah. I remember like going through the whole process and Lance talking about it. Like I learned something from Lance on this video that we did. And I had that with me, and I went down to Phoenix to go do some riding, right? And I had no idea where anything was. I'm like, oh, I'll just, you know, put in a route or something like that. Or, oh, you know, I can go use Strava, and they'll give me some route suggestions. Did that. Went and found a couple different uh, routes that I wanted to follow, I think three or four for the days that I was going to be there. Selected those routes, and then I That's pushed cool. it over to the, uh, the Wahoo. The Wahoo. Like, and then it, it said that it loaded it, but the problem was is it didn't have a map for where I was at. So it was just like showing me like this little worm trail as to where I should be going. I'm but like, well, no, but no street names yeah, or I no, had no idea. turn names. Yeah. yeah. So I went and did my first ride. Basically, ended up just like turning that off and just kind of going out and poking around and looking for trails and kind of trying to remember exactly where it was at. And I still ended up getting a little bit lost. And I just used the uh, the iPhone and said, to get yeah, back. Take, yeah. "Take me back to the hotel." <laughs> So I went back and I'm like, all right, I remember Lance saying something about this. I went in there and I deleted all of the different maps. Like I took it down to zero maps on there. And then I'm like, all right, well, I'll put in just the United States. I'm like, that's not that big. And then it's trying to load it, but it wouldn't load. I'm like, all right, stop that. Let's just do uh, the West Coast. Let's do Washington, Oregon, California, and Arizona. Wouldn't load any of them. Started like kind of it just saying like it's going through, it's uploading, and all of a sudden it says failed. I'm like, why is it doing this? And after like the... I don't know. It was like, uh, I don't know, like three or four hours later after like countless times, I'm like, all right, something's obviously wrong here. So I went and started reading and basically you, you have to have an internet connection. You can't do it through the cellular of your phone. Right. Unless you're, unless you're, unless you're crafty. And I'll tell you the, the rest of it in just a second, but um, you have to be connected to Wi-Fi. I'm like, all right. So I went ahead and connected to the Wi-Fi at the hotel. Well, it turns out you can't be connected to a Wi-Fi that has a splash screen. So when you're at a hotel or an airport, it always pops up with that splash screen. Like you've got to give them your information. You can't have something like that. It's just got to be a direct connect in. So I'm trying to drive around to find a coffee shop. I'm trying to like, you know, we're in the middle of COVID and everything's closed. I can't go in anywhere. And then if the places that we could find still had splash screens, I'm like, this is ridiculous. And I finally get to um, get to one restaurant or something like that, and there was a, a Wi-Fi there, no splash screen, but the Wi-Fi signal was so slow that it was causing it to fail. So what I ended up doing is I, my wife and I have iPhones, all right, and then I've got the hotspot, but she doesn't have hotspot on her phone, so I deleted everything off of my phone that was connected to the Wi-Fi or the the, the computer, and then I downloaded the app on my wife's phone, and then I connected with my wife's phone to the, the computer, and I connected to my phone via hotspot which it sees as a wi-fi oh signal that worked that worked that allowed me to download the maps that i needed finally get it pushed over and then i had to delete everything off of her phone then i had to re-up install the whole app and then i reconnect the, the bluetooth and all this stuff and then lo and behold the next time the next ride i did i was able to get mapping and it worked out really well even though it, it took me on some crazy enduro mountain bike right. course on my gravel <laughs> bike but that's neither here nor there what wahoo does is they they download general maps for the entire world, world. yeah 
And so you had I had to go you have to go through delete all the maps that are on there and then I just went back in and just what Jake said. Yeah. I was at home so I yeah. was able to do it because it was yeah. connected to my home Wi-Fi not on vacation and yeah. and I downloaded Washington, Oregon, California, Idaho, Nevada, West Utah. Coast. Just just the most of these states knowing that okay if I travel further east I'll have to download more maps yeah. onto it but at least that allowed me to get I'm going. I'm curious like if you could just do the entire United States, how much memory that takes up? Because it did have a bunch of different countries preloaded on there. Yeah. So I don't know. That that know would either. be the knock on that is that it doesn't have very much memory. So. Yeah. What other knocks? Uh, Climb Pro. Yeah, that's it, a big one. Is the other issue. So if you're not familiar with Garmin's Climb Pro, if you have a course downloaded onto your Garmin, when you come to the bottom of a climb. Um, it tells you how far the climb is in in um, in mileage, how many feet you gain, and what your uh, gradient what is. the gradient is. And it's color coded to the gradient, which is kind of yeah. nice. So you can just look down and know that yellow is like less than three percent, and red is above six yep. percent, and, and purple is that, above I think that's 10%. new to the. 530 and 800 in the 1030. It I might don't be. think that you have that on the 820. If I, I I've remember. been using that for two years now because I remember right. okay. you know using it at team training camp. I can yeah. remember using it when I was down in Southern California doing the MS ride because I just wanted to, to play with it a little bit. Right. And what's nice about that as well is like you've got a course downloaded. All right, let's say you're doing 50 miles. It's going to tell you, all right, you've got 11 climbs, so you're on climb three of 11. Yes. Yeah. So you know how to kind of pace yourself. And in a race situation, yeah, that's that's so valuable it to was. know how to, to, to gauge yourself. So so my gravel race this weekend, I used the Garmin, and the whole reason I used the Garmin was because I wanted the Climb Pro yep. on there. I wanted I wanted to know, okay, how long this climb is, how hard can I go, how hard do I not go. And sure. it, it made a difference because I knew I knew the first climb, it's seven miles. It was like 6.44 miles or something like yep. that for that, yep. that first climb. And I'm like, okay, I cannot – I cannot push 350 watts for six and a half yeah. miles. I will completely blow. Yep. And so, you know, I keep, and knowing that the last climb, and you can see, I've got 0.4 miles left. I've got 0.25 miles left. You know, even though you can kind of look up the road and know you're coming to it, but if it goes around a corner, you kind of, knowing that the climb pro, I know, okay, this is about at the top of the climb. I can push harder yeah. so I can try to hit it at the top of the climb yep. to get a jump on the downhill, you'll gain you'll gain 15 seconds like that. Yeah, and you do that four, five, six, seven times in the course of a race? That, that That's a minute and a half. Pays off. Yeah. So th now Wahoo has, it, they don't have anything similar to Climb Pro, but if you have a course downloaded in the Wahoo, it will, it will show you on the climbing page, there's a climbing page on Wahoo, it will show you what the profile is. Yeah, okay. But so you can't – it's not really super quick, easy to tell how long you have left, but you can see the steepness of the angle, and you can see kind of how long the climb is. It just doesn't give you the data that it's – It's not as precise. It's 2.38 yep. miles, yeah. and yeah, so it's just, just not as precise. I just wonder if Wahoo can get access to that data easily. That's a good point. So, Jake, when you're racing, uh -huh. which which one do you reach for? Uh, I haven't raced with Wahoo yet. I know. Because I haven't done any racing, but if I were to go do a race – that's a really good question. Um, I'm probably going to go back to the Garmin for that. Really? Just for the Climb Pro alone. Wow. Unless I know the course really well. Now, if it's a race I've done before and I have a really good idea of what it is, mm -hmm. wahoo. But if it's a new race or like any of these gravel races, if I don't know it, knowing that is going to make such a difference in terms of how you pace yourself yep. and to know what's ahead and just to be able to ha have a little bit more data that maybe your, your competitors don't have. I think that that's an advantage. Yeah. But if you were like going out on a ride that was like, this is a place I don't know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say you're going back to Arizona. Sure. What would you grab? Um, if I'm just going to ride and having fun, I'm taking the Wahoo with me. Gotcha. I, I, I pretty much made the switch. I've only used my Garmin uh, 530 one time since uh, we started doing the Wahoo testing. There are a couple other little things. I maybe it's just a, a function of me being so used to looking at a Garmin screen. I think it's just easier to kind of find the data field that you're looking for because they, they, when they have little titles and they have everything kind of boxed off and it just, it's the font that they use. It's the the boldness of that. And then the the actual metric itself is a little bit of a thinner line. And it's just for me, for my eyes, mm -hmm. I, I can find what I'm looking for a little bit faster. But I, I honestly can say that I think that that's just a function of me not using the Wahoo as long as the Garmin. Um, 
I don't know. I just I like the Wahoo. There's like it, you, it works with the radar, and I think it does. It, it takes Garmin's radar and it makes it a little bit better. Um, someone. <laughs> this is your. Oh yeah, we died yeah. over here. So yeah. sorry. <laughs> it takes camera just died. Was that your battery that yeah. died? I gotta shut up. Yeah, I thought it was plugged in, but anyway, um, it's got the little LED lights that go around it, which is fantastic for your heart rate and your power numbers. Yeah. It works really well for radar the, the radar. Yeah. It, it just giving you like just indications. It's really neat how it integrates those things in there. So. Um, I, I just think that the Wahoo is an all-around yeah. better unit. The indicator lights are cool. Yeah. The Rome has two sets of indicator lights. The Bolt just has one. Uh-huh. But the, cool. the battery life. Why don't you guys talk about the battery life real quick? The the battery life on the on the Garmin is a little bit better yeah. than the Wahoo. I want to say... I, I don't I'll, have the numbers on, want, it's, memorized It's, it's like 12 hours for the Garmin and it's like eight hours for the Wahoo. And then the bolt is even less than it's that. It's even less like than that. Six or something. I don't remember. Six or seven. I did Which, notice that that in my testing, the Wahoo battery life was nowhere near what they claimed on the website. And maybe that's yeah. because I'm running courses and Strava live segments all the time Could and be. all that stuff. So yeah. that's Yeah. Um Garmin has had that problem in the past with like the inaccurate estimates of battery life and yeah. recently they're really good about that kind of stuff you know they're on their watches as well as their bike computers so when they say their numbers you can kind of count on it a little bit yeah. more than you used to could so i yeah i i am not so when i bought this i thought about battery life and i was like am i gonna do a no, bike ride okay. over seven hours right. i'm like no not going to not anytime soon and if i do like then i start to think about like well what's the next computer going to be right you know um but yeah i don't i don't see battery life as a huge issue i could see being like on a you know trip like where you're doing where you're you know you're overnight and you're doing like bike packing or something like yeah. that then it's like battery power comes in it, real yeah, handy it becomes important and there's little things like um now with the new this new system you can have this new garmin battery pack that attaches on the bottom of your actual um there are like mount your bike mount there are little electrical uh, electrodes electrodes thank you yeah <laughs> where you can connect a, a extra battery pack to which the is pretty cool it's pretty cool yeah i mean there's ways you can do that where you flip things open and you use like a battery bank on your Wahoo to make things go longer. But it's just like a nice little thing that Garmin has, you know, as an option. Um, yeah, I there's there's a lot of little things that make me think that Garmin is easier to recommend to people. Again, I have no problem with my Wahoo, and that's yeah. you know that's what I'm planning on continuing to use for a while until I have a yeah. major problem with it, right. which I can't see happening. So yeah, I think it's just kind of splitting hairs. I mean, it just kind of boils down to like, are you a you Mac need? or a PC kind of person? And I, I really honestly think that there's a lot of similarities there. To, you know, if you're if you're more of a PC minded person and that's just kind of how you think and you're you're used to using those, Garmin's a good way to go. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think if yeah. you're more of a Mac person, I think that Wahoo's probably a little bit better of a way to go. Can they both improve? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I definitely think that they both have some pitfalls, and I think it really does become a subjective thing as to let's talk about what it is, what kind of riding you like to do, how you use right. it. And then I can make a recommendation based on that. And you're going to have yep. a better user outcome or user uh, experience there. I have uh, completely switched to the Wahoo Rome for all my road riding. Yep. So the, yeah. the Strava live segments are better. Yep. The, uh, the screens are better. It's more reliable. You can see the screen better. And so I've switched to the, to the Wahoo element Rome. Do you guys find that you get better GPS connectivity or accuracy yep. with the Wahoo product? Yep, it seems like that as well. I, I get that with that as well now. Really? Matt, you can speak to the GPS stuff because you deal with it all of the time, right. especially with like watches and whatnot. Um, the Rival, is that the watch that got? Yes. Wasn't there GPS in that kind of It was. They shaky? had issues. Yeah. yeah. They had issues with that, or I don't know if it's improved yet or not, but it's not as good as you know some other devices on the market no i don't understand how it's their not bike. as good but their their head units for the bikes i think are better than garmin in terms really? of the connectivity and, and a lot that. of that really boils down to not me necessarily going back and looking at the the lines and seeing mm -hmm. how it, it follows a road and whatnot but it's more has to do with the live segments on strava I can't tell you how many times I've been using a Garmin a and bit. it will either be off or I just won't ever pick up the segment or I'll be like into, and this is a classic one because it happened all the time yeah. there. Matt's favorite road oh, north. Yeah, yeah. Every single time I'll get started onto it. You come down that road, it dips up, drops, gone. Oh. Doesn't find it. The Wahoo, 
lights out from start to finish perfect it tells me everything Works that i need time. to know not i wonder a if it's gps or if it's like strava live segment integration i wonder if that's what the issue is well because what we should do is uh, in maybe i'll do this in a video where we put both of them on a bike mountain we'll sure. go ride and then we can look at the gps over the satellite data yeah. and we can see like okay where which one is actually holding lines yeah. more accurately well but for all intents and purposes though that, that's not the only segment it's probably a good yeah, oh yeah a dozen of them that it does that for me yeah. with the garmin and then the wahoo just doesn't do that it just seems like it works a little that's, bit better and strava live segments is huge for you guys oh, yeah. i mean that's, that's like one of your favorite things out having fun on the bike yeah yeah i think that's cool why else would you ride a bike <laughs> strava seg live segments the only thing only reason to ride a bike no uh yeah i think that you know for sure more testing can be done and you know a lot of these computers are actually using the same GPS chips, but the way they design the antenna is different. Oh. And so... They're using a Sony chip? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one that everyone has gone to at this point. Although, this is a two-year-old device, so yep. it could be... That might not be the case for that. Well, actually, are both of those two years old? They actually came out at the same time. They did. They, they came, came out within, like, days of each, each other. other. Do you yeah, remember that? Close, yeah, that was pretty close, yeah. That was tough. Yeah. I, uh, I I really do like the Wahoo. I'm, I I don't want to take anything away from Garmin. Yeah. I still say that they are the the giant. They yeah, are the you know the alpha of the whole industry. Um, but there's a lot of people that are really nipping at their tail. Yeah. I, you know uh, the hammerhead thing. I I'm interested in that. I want to go play with that. I want to see Me how too. much better it is. It looks pretty cool. It actually. does. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we well, need to reach out to them and get we'll, some. Uh, we'll we'll some do some testing. That'll be super yeah. interesting because I yeah I'm very curious about that device. There are other devices. Um, Lazine makes uh, a whole bunch of little computers that are all tend to be under two hundred dollars. Eh. Yeah, I know. Stages yeah. makes their little dash. Stages or makes or their dash. Yeah. Eh. Um, yeah, I haven't I haven't used that, but one of the guys on the um, on the flogging ride had one. Yeah. Uh, what other companies are there? MSW, SRM. They both make oh, head units. Okay. Um, they're not nearly as nice or as. Yeah. Uh, Feature rich, if you will. Interesting. So, um, one other thing that I don't like about the Wahoo, I love the buttons. I love how easy it is yeah. to go scroll through things, and I love how like if you don't want something, you just hit the page button, it goes right back to that page. Whereas the Garmin, like if I if it pulls up like a live segment, I don't want to go to that live segment, and I say in that it'll just take me to some other random page. It doesn't take mm. me back to the one I was working on. That was kind of an annoyance. So yeah. if you hit the page button on this guy, and if you don't want to follow like a live segment or something like that, it just takes you right back there. But if you go to the next page, there's not a back button. You have to scroll yes. through everything to come oh, back to your page. Yeah. It'd be nice if they could let you go back one. <laughs> with uh, with the Garmin, you can go up you or can, down. You can swipe right or swipe left yeah. and switch pages. Mm -hmm. With the Wahoo, you have to scroll through all the pages to get back to yeah, the one. Yeah, it's a single yeah. direction kind of yeah. thing. So that's uh, it's small, but it's it is a small yeah. annoyance. So, well, I would be curious if they would ever do a touch screen. I mean, I just think that there's still there's still no perfect bike computer that we're aware of. So I just think like there's still an opportunity for some, you know, whether it's Wahoo or someone to just be like, we're going to do touch screens. We're going to do, we're going to keep the buttons. We're going to allow you to lock the touch screen and you know, it's just like knock it out of the park. Would you ever Wouldn't recommend that somebody buy a watch over any of these head units who's just a cyclist? Does that ever make sense? Or is I that again, I a very subjective thing? Well, so I, all the cyclocross riders wear watches. Really? Yeah, because if they're because swapping b pit swap bikes. bikes. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good call. There, there's a weight penalty to using, you know, a bike mount in a bike computer. Yep. There's, and then there's a lot of weight weenies out there that can get a very light watch. Sure. And I don't think GPS accuracy is quite as important on the bike as it is on something like running or walking where you're doing, you know, slower movements and things like yeah. that because you're potentially taking sharper turns. I, I don't know. I, budgetary most reasons, maybe if uh, somebody does like to hike and run and do all that other stuff and yeah. you know, they right. can only have one to rule them all. I mean, it makes way more sense yeah. to have a watch. Yeah. 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 I agree. I just, I mean, typically I'll recommend people, yeah, have a bike computer and a watch, but yep. it's kind of sounds a little snotty to be like, Hey, you need to buy both. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, and so there's some very good watches on the market for sure. All right. So you have nothing. You got to go out and buy something today. What unit are you going to go out and buy? Today, yeah. I would probably wait and see what kind no, of No, you are going to buy a <laughs> computer today. Come on there. Um, you have to buy one. Me? Yeah. With your own hard-earned cash. 
I think 5.30. 5.30 would be... 5.30? I think so. Lance? I'd buy the Wahoo Element Rome. Yeah. And you would forego the Climb Pro? If, and if I didn't know about Climb Pro, I wouldn't know what I'm missing. <laughs> so I would just get but the Rome. Let's say you know everything. Let's say you, <laughs> yeah, you know <laughs> everything. You've watched the Dial podcast. You're very well informed. Um, all things considered, I'd probably still buy the Rome. Yep. Yep. Wow. Yep. Same. Yeah. Rome. I think that it's a, a fantastic device. It's got a couple little uh, blind spots, but it will... Be something that I think uh, Wahoo will fill in those voids. Yeah. yeah. Fingers crossed. Because they are very hungry and they're scrappy and they want to take as much of that market share as they possibly can. And I think that they, they listen to the Dial podcast, right? They do. Yeah. <laughs> they do. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully they hear these things and they fill those voids. David uh, Bussey said, uh, Evan could use a Thomas guide and a highlighter. That's what he would <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and a compass. <laughs> <laughs> And a light dial, <laughs> a sundial. <laughs> we should we should build something for the front of Evan's bike that encompasses all of that stuff. That would be so <laughs> freaking rad. Guide, and a yellow highlighter and a and a compass taped to when it. When he turns thirty years old, which is coming up this year, if I'm not mistaken, maybe that's something we'll have to we'll have to build. <laughs> that could be fun. So, all right, let's uh, let's put a, a pin in that because I think this is something that we could talk about for days and days, yeah. and I think that some stuff is going to be coming down the pipeline sooner than later. So hopefully, we'll have some things to compare and contrast it to. That was fun. That was fun. Bike computer talk. <laughs> Bike tech talk. Let's do one last thing. Mr. Matt Legrand, what you got, bud? Uh, I did interview one of my friends, my, one of my YouTube friends last I week. I saw that. I haven't, had, watch chance, uh, I haven't okay. had a chance to watch it because I haven't been on the trainer since I saw that it came out. But okay. I will watch that. Uh, so here's what he's doing. He's doing, uh, during the Tour de France, he's doing a kilometer for every mile that they're doing. And uh, he's calling it, you know, my own my own grand tour and he's raising money for uh this cancer um fund that helps fund families that are dealing with cancer sure. it's really cool and uh his wife basically just went through all of this cancer with his wife and oh. it's been yeah so pandemic plus wife had cancer oh. so oh. yeah i mean it was a big nightmare so he's doing this event and he's a total bike nerd you you guys will love him he's uh he's just like history buff on all the tour stuff like you know how like evan goes on and oh on. yeah same sort of situation and uh, he is, so he's raising money for that, so that's cool. And he's doing this three week tour, and the logistics are intense. Like, he's going to try to film it and blog every single day as well. Seriously? Yep. Now, how is he? Well, you're going to like, watch the video. You're like the camera stuff. Yeah. How's he going through the route selection? Uh, he is doing, um, so he actually was very big on the tour and when they actually announced the routes he yeah. like had his own predictions on what he thought they would announce and he was like pretty spot on so he's been doing all the research and so his his own tour m kind of matches the elevation that they have so he i don't remember the exact conversion but for every like foot climbed or whatever he's you know climbing a certain amount as well and so he's got to go find routes that do all this stuff he's doing time trials he's doing all the oh things my goodness and uh the logistics look tricky and you know he was just like he's going to come back he he's using a 360 and it's a 360 sure. camera yeah and he's using the go uh, road go to microphone so he's gonna be able to talk and yeah. be able to pr you know chat about what's going on and stuff like that it's a nice setup and it's just like he's very camera oriented like he's very specific about how he wants things to look sure very good cinematographer actually and uh it's gonna be cool to see him make that happen so i interviewed him it was a really nice interview um it's different than what a lot of stuff on my channel is very you know tech right now it's a lot of tech products on my channel at this point and i like that i enjoy it but i also want to do other things sure. and so uh, i'm going to try to at least sprinkle in some stuff that's not super product related occasionally but then this week i think pretty soon maybe when this podcast comes out on wednesday i'll have a video talking about using this wahoo element bolt after one year because it's been almost exactly one year mm -hmm. so I'm excited about that, and then I have a whole bunch of other computers that I want to um, review, as well as some swimming products and uh, a whole bunch. I've got like a shelf full of products to review that I've just yeah. got to work my way through. So, yeah. I've referred you, um, your channel to two people I know for sure this past oh, thank week. thank you. Yeah, they were asking me different questions about different stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like, do you know Matt Legrand? I'm like, no. I'm like, you got to meet Matt Legrand. The best way to get to know him, though, is go check out his <laughs> YouTube channel. Yeah. So and you're like, yeah. Find that one where yeah. he does the drug. <laughs> <laughs> Cheats on Zwift. Yeah, just watch out for Chester. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Hepler. Uh, one, one last, last thing, thing for me. Yeah. Um, 
if my body heals up enough, uh, I'm going to go race mountain bikes this weekend. Nice. Who, who am I kidding? Where's the race? I'm going to go race regardless whether I'm healed gonna up race, or not. Yeah. I'm going to race. It's in Bend again. Okay. Bend, Oregon. So you're so. back on the road. So I'm back on the road. It's, Bend's only three hours from here, so. Are you, will you be back on Monday? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be back. Will you stay the night on Saturday? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I think the... I think the race is on Saturday, so I'll drive down on Friday. I'll probably drive Friday morning so that I can pre-ride part of the course sure. on Friday afternoon and then race it on Saturday. Can you take a bride with you? I don't know if she'll come or not. You do know that Sunday is Mother's Day, right? Oh, yeah. I better be home. For... Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just putting that I, I out there. Not, I just I don't want you to get put in the doghouse so we can't go ride bikes when you are back in town <laughs> one of these right. millennia. <laughs> yeah, so that's it for me. Oh, uh, you know what? I want to ask you one other thing, too. How did Brandy do in her soccer tournament? Um, they played four different games. They won two games and lost two games. So okay. they uh, they did well. They Good. enjoyed it. They Good had for a great her, time. So Good for her. that's awesome. It was it was a lot of fun. Everybody stayed injury free. Kept their ACLs um, intact. No ACLs was broken, but uh, a uh, a wrist was broken. Oh, ouch. Uh, okay. Yep. So the only hospital events were the broken wrist and me possibly getting dehydration <laughs> <laughs> or teeth stroke. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, she did good. My one last thing is going to be the guys over at POA, Pacific Office yeah. Automation. They've been doing, and, and they they did it for all of April, if I'm not mistaken, but they did the uh, Hag Lake Worlds out there. Yep. So yes. they usually do the Savvy Island Worlds, and it's just like yep. a, a big, you know, basically knock them out, drag hammer them down, fest, hammer right. fest. You yeah. know. But they took that out to Hag Lake, and then they did that and uh, the team director david root was doing a great job of putting out videos as a matter of fact he's done a, quite a few videos yes. for a flogging for ride. the flogging ride. And i'm like really david how do you have time to do that like he goes home and he edits all the video and it's like it's in like he shoots me over a text with the link to the facebook and or, and all the other places he posts on youtube and whatnot it's there either that night or the next morning i'm like dude i can barely get myself in the house and and you know fed and fall asleep and you're already you know putting videos up but he did the same thing for all the hag lake stuff that's so awesome he um I've watched all those videos. They're yeah, fun. They're yeah. Good. And they've got um there was like prizes that they were handing out for like the KOMs. Which day and of the, the week do they do that? Sunday. It's Sunday. Sunday. So okay. they're back to doing the Savvy Worlds, but now this coming weekend they're gonna do one more Hag Lake. And they're gonna do like like this is gonna be their world championship race. Ah, so good for them. It's uh unofficial. It's not sponsored by anybody. It's not in, in I, I'm not sure where the monies came from, but they magically appeared and uh <laughs> there's some funds that can be won. It's not a race. Nobody knows where these money came from, but <laughs> supposedly like if you win like a lap or a preem or a KOM, you're, there's some cash that might come to your way and some some other prizes. That's so pretty awesome. They've got that coming up. It's normally done on Sundays, not this go around. You know why? Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. So they're oh. moving it to Saturday. So um, if you want some more information on that, um, you're going to, if you're watching that now here on YouTube, uh, you can go to uh, Savvy World's um, Facebook group. Facebook page, and, yeah. And you can, uh, it's not a page, it's a group. It's so a group. Yeah, okay. you can request to join that and you can see all the information there. Um, if you're listening to this on Wednesday, you'll still have a few days to get that sorted out. It's uh, just kind of show up and go do the race. It should be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, we want to help support them because we don't want to see road racing dying and they're still kind of putting this out there and it's a fun group ride it's a, a race pace thing that's kind of like our flogging yeah. ride so we want to support them in that. for what it's worth those guys seem like stand-up individuals like yep. just an awesome team super cool dudes. very cool team very yeah. strong almost as cool as the dial team but <laughs> just you know and i think other than that i think that's about it all right anything else did i forget anything that's it no all right uh you forgot the there's that second to last comment i think that needs to be uh the fast sure. light I believe that was going to saw Lance the race this last weekend. Good job sweeping. Yeah. Sweet. Sweeping. <laughs> <laughs> sweeping the races. <laughs> nice. Well, All right, that's sweeping, sweeping the skin, skin off the pavement. <laughs> yeah. Sweeping, <laughs> scraping my face on the pavement. Yeah, my camera did die, David Bussey. I uh, didn't charge. We it couldn't fix enough. it. <laughs> I tried plugging it in, <laughs> but yeah. you don't need to see my ugly mug and, anyway. And then me and Matt were not looking at each other. <laughs> Either. Oh yeah, we should have the the us flips so that yeah. we look at each other yeah. when we go like that. That's what professional people do. <laughs> we are not we, we are, are not professional. professional. <laughs> we'll get there. I can yeah. talk like this to Lance. Cool. Hmm. Anyhow, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We will see you all next week on another Dial Podcast. Bye for now.